Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good evening to all my students. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin wa salatu wassalamu ala sayyidina wa hadina ala alamin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-ibadah wa jannah wa na'udzu bika min sakhati wa nar. Okay today uh, our class is about uh, occupational safety and health okay and i will continue uh, with uh, chapter number three uh, occupational health and control uh, before i start this class uh, i like to thanks uh, to my click uh, Dr. Alias uh, Muhammad Saman, he has prepared this slide for all of us uh, to learn and also gain uh, the uh, knowledge of uh, occupational safety and health. What is actually the occupational health and control? Uh, occupational health and control are essentials. Uh, for ensuring a safety and productive work force by for by focusing on preventing uh, workplace hazard and promoting uh, the overall uh, well-being of employees. Okay, actually that is the uh, meanings of uh, this chapter occupational health and control. Uh, as you see in the slide, in this chapter, we will uh, learn or focus six sub-chapter. That means number one, we will look on the introductions to industrial hygiene and occupational health. Uh, number two, uh, indoor air quality and ventilation system and then we will learn on the safe working uh, in a confined space uh, after that we will look on the ergonomics uh, what's meaning by manual handling standing sitting then etc and of course, we also will look on the stress and violence at the workplace. And lastly, we will look on the biological hazards, uh, how to prevent uh, and also uh, look on the PPE. Okay, this all uh, six. Uh, Sub chapter that will be covered in this uh, chapter number three. Let's go. Let's look on the uh, introductions to industry hygiene and occupational health. Industrial hygiene, or another name for this uh, term, is uh, occupational hygiene is a sign of uh, protecting and enhancing the health and safety uh, of people uh, in the workplace uh, through an uh, anticipation, um, regulations, evaluations and controls of environmental factors that may be caused sickness, okay? uh, impact health, or discomforts among workers. So, uh, industry uh, hygiene uh, play a critical role uh, in identifying and controlling workplace hazards to ensure a safe working environment. Uh, so, for the uh, key components uh, of the industrial or occupational hygiene, uh, there are four uh, that can be categorized. Number one, 
uh, is uh, anticipations of hazards. Okay, what is anticipation of hazards? Actually, uh, this is a uh, industrial uh, hygiene uh, predict potential health hazards before they rise. Okay, that is important. So, uh, uh, so before uh, before we uh, can we must uh, predict the potential health hazard, hazards. Okay, based on the nature of work uh, processes, uh, material that we use and the work environment. Uh, this actually involves uh, understanding the specific industrials and in the uh, defining potential sources of harm. Okay, a, a example when you deal with chemicals, also deal with noise, dust or uh, radiations. Okay, and that is anticipation. Number two, uh, recognition of hazards. Okay, uh, for this, uh, number, number two, recognition of hazards. Uh, firstly, you have to systematically identify, okay, identifying the specific hazards present in the workplace, uh, such as chemicals, as uh, example, uh, it have vapor uh, situations, uh, physical agents, uh, example here is uh, maybe on noise, uh, heat or radiations, or, or uh, biological agents, okay, uh, like a bacteria or, or viruses, recognize the hazards. This can be done through inspections, Monitoring and report from workers. Okay, that is for number two, recognition. Number three, uh, evaluations of hazards. Okay, re number three is uh, evaluation of hazards. What will you do in evaluation of hazards? Uh, first, uh, you have to measuring. Okay, measuring the extent of workers explore to Identify hazards. Okay, uh, so this often involves sampling uh, air, water, or surface, and using uh, analytical tools to assess the concentrations and intensity of the harmful agents. Um, industrial hygiene compare expose level to the occupational exposed limits set by regulation bodies such as OSHA that means OSHA uh, stands for Occupational Safety and Health Administration or ACGIT okay A-C-G-I-H ACGIT uh, this is for in uh, American Conference of Governmental Industrial Hygiene okay this is for evaluations of the hazard Okay, evaluation and the last one is a uh, control okay yeah. how to con control the hazards one hazard uh, hazard has been identified and evaluated the next step is implementing control measures to reduce to reduce uh, workers as poor okay this is typically done to a uh, hierarchy of controls uh, okay hierarchy of control which is uh, eliminations uh, substitutions and then engineering controls administrative controls and also personal perception equation uh, equipment ppe okay that's will we look uh, afterwards okay um beside of this uh, for uh, disciplines of the uh, industrial uh, hygiene, uh, the the area okay we can see now that, that we can look against on the area okay the area uh, the area of the industrial hygiene focus uh, 
the area may be touched on the number one on the uh, chemical hazards that's mean uh, handling and managing uh, exposure to harmful chemical including toxic uh, films gases dust meats and vapors uh, this is for chemical hazards also, uh, the key area of this industrial hygiene is uh, physical hazards. Uh, that means controlling uh, exposure to physical agents such as uh, excessive noise, heat, cool, vibration, and radiation. Uh, using soundproofing, installations, and protective uh, clothing to reduce risk. Okay. And uh, another area uh, that's been involved is uh, biological hazards. Uh, by managing as managing exposures to micro uh, organism, uh, that mean bacteria, viruses, fungus, which are can cause infections and uh, diseases. Ensuring proper sanitation, these infections and the use of uh, PPEs in environment like uh, healthcare, food processing and also with management. Um, another area is uh, ergonomic hazards. Uh, by preventing muscular skeletal injuries, uh, by designing tasks, equipment and work pieces to fit the workers' physical uh, capacities, addressing issues such as uh, repetitive motions, awkward uh, postures, and uh, heavy lifting. Uh, that is for uh, ergonomic ha hazards. And another one is uh, environmental monitoring and analysis. Okay, continuous monitoring of air quality, noise levels, radiations, and other environments factor to ensure complying with safety standard. Also use tools like air, sampling pump, sound level meters, and radiation detectors for accurate assessment. Now we look at the importance of the uh, occupational hygiene or industrial hygiene. Why this uh, it is so important? Okay, it is important because of workers' health protection. Okay, that means by when we identifying and controlling hazards, industrial hygiene helps to prevent occupational diseases and accidents. Promoting long term health and productivity, uh, and also regulate uh, regulatory complaints. Uh, that's mean uh, that's mean ensures uh, the that workplaces uh, adhere to national and international safety uh, regulations, uh, reducing the risk of fitness lawsuits or shutdown. And uh, another why it is important is the productivity enhancement. A safe and healthy work environment reduce absenteeism, increases workers' moral and enhance overall productivity. Okay, uh, this uh. As you see in this uh, slide, okay, this is uh, all the importance of the occupational uh, hygiene. You can also uh, go one by one, okay. Uh, what is important? Okay, effect increase the activity that as I have been explained. Uh, save money. Uh, this is also. Uh, uh, save money for the uh, uh, workers and also uh, professionalism. Okay, for the professionalism. Okay, principle of control. Okay, principle of control. Uh, because uh, in this chapter, uh, 
in the occupational health, uh, it have a control strategies. Okay, the principle of controls. Uh, number one, uh, control strategies in occupational health uh, can be uh, elevated into uh, five uh, steps. Number one, eliminations. Okay, eliminations or substitutions. That means re you removing the hazard entirely or substitution it with something less harmful. Okay. Uh, number two, uh, engineering control. Okay, this principle of control, engineering control. Um, number two, engineering control. Uh, isolating uh, workers from hazards through uh, ventilations, noise reductions, machinery uh, guarding or automate, automated system. Automate system. Okay, that means we have to isolate workers from hazards. Okay, that is for engineering control. Number three, uh, administrators control. So, uh, what mean by administrative control? Uh, adjusting work schedule, okay, rotating shift, and uh, enforcing work uh, rest cycles to minimum, minimize uh, workers as floor as exposed to hazard. Uh, train program for employees on safe practice and emergency. Uh, procedure. Okay, uh, that's for the administrative control. Uh, then we, you can also uh, use uh, use a personal protective equipment. That means PPE, uh, ensuring uh, workers use PPE uh, such as helmets, a glove, mask, and uh, hearing protect to reduce the risk of uh, injury. Okay, that's all the uh, PPE. And the last one is uh, health surveillance. Okay, health surveillance. Health surveillance is regularly a regular medical examinations, uh, health screen screening, uh, and monitoring the workers in high risk. Uh, environment. Uh, early detections of health issue uh, to prevent long term conditions. Okay, that is the uh, the uh, uh, control strategies uh, in occupational uh, health. Here okay, is uh, uh, some example of the guidelines for industry hygiene and occupational health. So, uh, number one example, uh, guideline on heat stress management at workplace 2016. Okay, uh, this is uh, what is a heat stress. Okay, heat stress is the overall overall heat load. Okay, each in the employer may be exposed for the combined contributions to metabolic heat environment factor. Uh, air temperature, humidity, air movement, and radiation heat, and clothing equipment. Okay, uh, what are the effects of heat stress? Okay, this is all the effect of heat stress. Symptom, this is all the symptom that will be for the employee. So, uh, what we have to do, uh, when it happens, so this is a cut line. Uh, example, in the manufacturing example of workers at which the activities must be uh, for the workers okay uh, this all the guideline uh, heat stress evaluation and control uh, low risk medium risk and high risk so you have to refer this uh, manual okay this uh, measurement manual and the hazard of the heat stress. 
Okay, this is a symptom. Has it? Has it? So the symptom of the heat stress should never be ignored. Okay, okay. This is one of the example. Another one is uh the another one another uh examples uh that uh got line right, on the uh occupational safety and health for design inspection testing and the of the code okay this is all you can read afterwards okay we go next on the occupational health what is occupational health occupational health uh, focus on the safety health and uh, welfare of uh, individuals in the workplace. Uh, its uh, primary goal is to prevent uh, work-related injuries, uh, diseases, hazards by promoting a safe and healthy working environment. This uh, discipline encompass a wide range of activity from identifying potential workplace hazards to developing a strategy for risk management and employee well-being okay uh, so uh, the key areas of occupational health uh, can be divided one into hazard identifications and risk assessment um, so in this area first you have to identify in physical chemical biological agronomic and uh, physio social uh, hazards that may affect uh, workers Conducting regular risk assessment to ensure a safe working uh, environment. Then the key, the number two key area is occupational diseases uh, and injur injuries uh, by monitoring and preventing a condition like hearing loss. Uh, this uh, re pet uh, risk respiratory issues, skin diseases, um, and uh, muscular, muscular uh, disorders. Uh, okay, that is uh, also tracking and responding to uh, incidents and near miss in the work uh, place. Uh, so number three is ergonomics. Okay, maybe you can design in workplaces and equipments to fit the workers physical capacities and reduce strain and fatigue also uh, promoting uh, pro proper posture equipment use and movement to minimize long-term health problems and uh, number four workplace wellness program okay wellness program offering initiative like a fitness program mental health support and stress management workshop uh, encouraging uh, workers to adopt healthy lifestyle choose uh, both in and out of the workplace and uh, number five regular regulatory complaints uh, ensuring the workplace comply with local, national and international occupational health regulations. Okay, regulation audits and check to meet safety standards. That is the uh, uh, what sorry. That is uh, the key. Okay, the key area of the occupational health. Okay, this is uh, like the guideline on the Example, eh? this is one example, the guidelines on the ADS uh, Mosquito Control 2015. So, these are the guidelines. This is all the, uh, the 
juga namanya. And also this is the haze and jerebu. Okay. The occupational health practitioners, okay, occupational health practitioners, um, OHP, are uh, healthcare professionals who focus on the health, safety, and well-being of workers in the various industry. So they work to prevent diagnosis and manage workplace-related illness, injuries, and diseases. These uh, practitioners play a vital role in ensuring that the work environment are safe and conducive to employee health, they, uh, thereby improving overall pro productivity and reducing the risk of long-term health issues. Okay, uh, there are various of type of the health practitioners. Uh, Occupational health doctor, occupational health nurse, uh, occupational hygienist, uh, hygiene technicians, ergonomics, safety and health officer. Okay, this all uh, is the uh, uh, practice practices uh, for uh, occupational health. So uh, you can read all these uh, term and these are the guidelines for the prisoner. For the uh, summary, industrial hygiene is a crucial component of uh, occupational health aimed at safeguarding workers from potential hazards and uh, creating safe Healthier works environments. Top chapter number two: Indoor air quality and ventilation system. Before I go further on this uh, sub chapter, uh, do uh, your free time uh, to watch the YouTube uh, video. Number one and number three about the uh, uh, introductions of indoor air quality. Americans spend approximately 90% of their time indoors. This means that most of us are constantly living in tightly sealed spaces in a toxic bubble of sorts. Although air pollution is typically regarded as an outdoor concern, the fact is that indoor levels of pollutants can be two to five times higher than outdoor pollutant levels and can be 100 times higher in some cases according to the Environmental Protection Agency. While it's true that the right amount of ventilation with fresh, clean air can reduce the levels of indoor air pollution, this isn't an efficient way to protect yourself and your family. What causes indoor air pollution? There are a number of things that can cause indoor air pollution, including various molds, building materials, carpeting, air fresheners, personal care products, tobacco smoke, and one of the biggest causes of all, common household cleaners. Most people don't realize just how toxic their household cleaning products are. Hundreds of potentially dangerous chemicals are emitted by household cleaning agents. Fortunately, there are steps you can take to reduce indoor air contaminants, including the following. Avoid using over-the-counter toxic cleaning products and air fresheners in general. Don't use more than one cleaning product at a time on the same cleaning task and be sure to read the instructions for use. Always ensure that you have adequate ventilation, not only while you clean, but for several hours afterward. Store anything you used along with your cleaning products like sponges, paper towels and mops away from your home's living and dining areas even after you've cleaned and rinsed them. Alleviate indoor pollution problems by choosing non-toxic, all-natural cleaning products. Learning how to regulate your home's environment will not only lower allergen levels, but help protect you from other respiratory illnesses and health complications that have been associated with indoor air pollution. 
using non-toxic household cleaners will go a long way towards safeguarding you and your family's health. Okay, uh, after uh, you have uh, finished watch this uh, YouTube channel, okay, we continue to what is uh, indoor air quality? Okay, based on the uh, based on the new signsul.com indoor air quality, uh, two hundred cent higher allergen levels in super insulated home as compared with ordinary homes and two to ten times more pollution uh, occur indoors than outdoors uh, six out of ten homes are hazardous to their occupant health. 160% childhood asthma rates have increased in the past 20 years. Okay, this is quite uh, dangerous. Uh, look, uh, it looks like not a very serious. But this is a uh, uh, case of the uh, serious uh, factor that we have to deal with. Okay, so what is uh, indoor air quality? Indoor air quality, okay, IAQ, uh, refer to the uh, conditions of the air inside uh, buildings and structures, uh, particularly in relation to the health and comfort of occupants. Poor indoor air quality can lead to various uh, health issues such as uh, respiratory problems, allergies, and in several cases, long-term conditions uh, such as asthma. One of the key components to maintaining good IAQ is an effective ventilation system. That's why uh, in this subject, uh, IAQ uh, and uh, ventilation system. Okay, so uh, the key, okay, the key factor of uh, indoor air quality. Let's look at the key factor. Uh, the key factor uh, number one um, pollution. Okay, these include gases, uh, carbon monoxide, uh, redox, uh, volatile organics components, uh, VOC, uh, particulate matter. Uh, example dust and pollen, uh, biological contaminants, example mold and bacteria, and also chemical from household products. Uh, it's also the key uh, factor is come from the humidity. High humidity can lead to the mold growth, while low humidity can cause dry skin and respiratory irritation. Uh, number three is uh, air exchange. Uh, proper circulation of the fresh air is a ritual to dilute indoor pollution. Uh, number four, also the temperature. Okay, temperature uh, and optimization temperature range uh, actually uh, in between uh, 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 38 to 72 Fahrenheit is important for comfort. That's mean uh, 24 uh, to 27 Celsius. Okay, and to prevent condensations and also uh, dampness. So, 
So uh, beside of the IAQ uh, indoor air quality, uh, we uh, you also have to know about the ventilation system. Okay, ventilation system. So uh, what is the ventilation system? Okay, actually the ventilation system is uh, essentials for controlling indoor air quality by uh, removing pollutions, moisture and odors and by providing uh, fresh air from outside. Uh, there are uh, some types of the ventilation system. Uh, number one is the natural ventilation. Uh, this is achieved uh, by opening windows and doors to allow uh, fresh air in and let uh, still air out. It's simple but may not be reliable in extreme weather conditions or area with a bit of high pollution. Uh, number two is uh, mechanical ventilation. Uh, example as uh, exhaust ventilation. So this system expels indoor air to the outside, creating negative pressure. Uh, it's uh, effective in removing, uh, removing indoor pollution but may lead to energy loss. Uh, second of the mechanical ventilation is supply ventilation. This system introduces outdoor air into the buildings. It's helpful in controlling humidity but requires uh, filtration to prevent interaction uh, pollution. Uh, number three is balanced ventilation, uh, where the systems that provides both exhaust and supply ventilation, requiring uh, an equal amount of air, is drawn in and expelled. Often, uh, combined of energy recovery system to reduce energy loss. So, um, number three uh, of the ventilation is uh, energy recovery ventilation. That's mean uh, ERV and heat uh, recovery uh, ventilation, HRV. So, this system use heat exchanger uh, to remove energy from exhaust air and use it to uh, conditions incoming fresh air. Uh, this makes the ventilation process more energy uh, efficient. Okay, uh, that is some of the uh, ventilation system that can be used uh, in the uh, if we got the a poor uh, IAQ. Okay, before we go to six building syndrome, uh, I also want to discuss uh, with all of you about the uh, improving how to improve indoor air quality okay uh, you can improve uh, number one by using air filtration okay uh, using high e efficiency filter uh, like HEPA filter that's mean in uh, HVAC HVAC system can trap dust uh, pollen and other particles uh, and also you can also use regular maintenance uh, clean dust uh, vent and filter regularly uh, to ensure the system run effectively effectively and don't regulate contaminants uh, you also can uh, control the humidity uh, use the uh, humidifier or dehumidifiers to maintain humidity level between 23 to 50 percent and uh, other uh, method is uh, source control that may minimize the use of indoor pollutions like tobacco smoke strong cleaning chemical or building material that relies release uh, volatilized um, organic compound VOCs Okay, we all see a very dangerous to our health. So, uh, ensuring uh, good indoor air quality and having a well designed ventilation system can greatly enhance the comfort, health, and productivity 
of equipment okay so uh, if you have a pool of the uh, indoor air uh, uh, quality it will uh, occur a six building syndrome what is the six building uh, six building syndrome uh, this is referred to the situations where occupants of the building experience a cure health symptom or discomfort that seems to be linked directly to time spell in the building but with no specific illness or cause that can be identified the symptoms often dismiss or disappear when people leave the building. Uh, sick building syndrome can affect uh, productivity, comfort and health and is typically associated with poor indoor air quality. So uh, this is quite dangerous uh, for uh, uh, occupants uh, in the building. Uh, the symptom of this uh, SBS is a uh, heat change, uh, eye, nose, and throat irritations, dry cough, uh, dizziness, and nausea, uh, fatigue, uh, concentration problem, skin irritation, sensitivity to outdoor. This symptom can vary among the uh, among individual and are often more notable in building with inadequate uh, ventilations or specific environment issues. So that is a six building build, uh, syndrome. What will cause a six building syndrome? Uh, number one is poor ventilation, uh, insufficient fresh air or ineffective distribution of air can lead to the build up of uh, pollution. Uh, this one of the most common contributes to uh, SPS. Uh, number two is chemical uh, contaminants, uh, VOC of course, volatile organic compounds uh, found in the pay. Uh, Paints, uh, cleaning products, adhesive carpets, and office furniture. VOCs are chemical compound that can cause irritations and other symptoms. Outdoor pollution, uh, poorly designed, uh, poorly designed uh, ventilation system can produce. Uh, outdoor air pollution like exhaust, uh, vehicle exhaust, industrial emissions, and pollen. Biological contaminants, uh, mold, bacteria, the meats, and other microorganisms can grow uh, in human and poorly ma maintain uh, HVAC system, uh, carpet, uh, and installation leading to respirate, uh, respiratory syndrome and allergies uh, and also it is caused by inadequate humidity control too much humidity can provide the growth of mold and dust mix uh, why too little humidity can cause dry uh, skin eyes and also must cause uh, membranes uh, number four is electromagnetic uh, radiations. In some cases, uh, prolonged uh, exposed to electromagnetic uh, radiation from computer wiring uh, and other electronic devices has been suggested as a contribution factor, although this is less well established. Occupant uh, density also cause, uh, will cause SBS. Uh, crowd space can increase carbon dioxide levels and make the environment feel stuffy. Contributions uh, to discomfort of, of the syndrome. Lighting and agronomics, of course, poor lighting, uh, as um, uh, especially uh, fluorescent lighting. 
an inadequate ergonomic uh, workstation setup, uh, furniture design, uh, can cause eye strain, head chip, and uh, multifamily problems. Maybe go to can also contribute to SB S six building syndrome. Okay, so uh, uh, there are uh, 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 some steps to preventing and addressing sleep building syndrome. Okay, you have to improve uh, ventilation, you can control sources of pollution, regular HVAC maintenance, uh, humidity control, uh, air filtering, monitoring and testing, and redesign workspaces, employee education. Okay, so uh, that is a more important uh, 6 billion syndrome. Because this uh, is a serious concern, especially in the workplace and building uh, public buildings. By improving uh, indoor uh, air quality, controlling uh, environment factor, and ensuring regular maintenance and of ventilation system, uh, SBS can offer uh, be pro prevented and elevated, resulting in health trigger and multiple environment. Or okay, uh, so uh, that is for uh, six building uh, syndrome. What you have to know. Source of uh, sources for indoor air pollution. Uh, this this is uh, where uh, these uh, material or sources that uh, contribute to indoor air pollution. Um, so the uh, indoor air pollution uh, come from various sources. Uh, so by understanding these sources uh, is key to improving uh, indoor air quality and reducing the risk of uh, related health issues. Okay, number one, uh, the sources come. The source of uh, sources come from building material and furnishings. Okay. Uh, VOCs, volatile organic components. These are gases emitted by certain solid and liquid or liquid, including uh, paint, uh, vanish, finish, uh, and uh, finish, finish, finishes, uh, adhesive, carpet and flooring, component wood, uh, produce. Like uh, play wood or part, uh, party board, particle board, uh, dry wall. Also, uh, asbestos, okay, found in the older building, particularly in insulation, uh, shielding tie, and pipe uh, webbing. Um, so, inhalation of asbestos, uh, Fiber can lead to lung uh, diseases, diseases uh, such as uh, asbestosis and lung cancer. Okay. Uh, number two, the source comes from the combustion sources. Uh, of course, tobacco, tobacco smoke. Uh, secondhand uh, smoke contains a mixture of harmful chemicals, including uh, carbon monoxide, uh, benzene. Uh, it is a major contribution to indoor air pollution. Uh, also, fuel burning uh, appliances, uh, appliances like a gas stove, a heater, a fireplaces that burn wood, natural gas, uh, or oil can release pollution like carbon monoxide, nitrogen dioxide, and particle metals. Um, candle and incense burning this re can release particle matter, carbon monoxide, and VOC. Okay, and then household. Uh, remember household product. Okay, household product is also can a source of the uh, in-law pollutions. Uh, cleaning product. 
many cleaning agents, uh, these uh, infectants and air fresheners contain VOCs and other harmful chemicals. Uh, personal care product uh, like hair spray, deodorants, nail polish can release VOCs. Uh, pesticide, pesticides used to control pests like insect and rodents. Uh, pesticides can linear in the air and settle on the surface. Okay. This is a dust mic. Okay, this is uh, all the pictures of the fungus. Uh, also, number four is a biological contaminant. Okay, moles uh, and mildew. Okay, moles. Uh, moles grows in the common of damp areas such as bathroom, basement, and around the leaky windows, spores, and uh, fragments released into the air can cause allergies, reaction and respiratory issues. Dust meat, micro micro pits, meat term in warm, humid environments and can contribute to asthma and allergy reactions. Uh, pet tender and hair protein found in the pet salivia, skin flakes and urine can trigger allergy insensitive individuals. Bacteria and viruses, these are microorganisms can spread in poorly ventilation spaces, contributions to illness like a cold and flu. Uh, number five is uh, outdoor sources. Okay, outdoor sources. Uh, outdoor air pollution. Pollutants such as ozone, particle metals, uh, and vehicle emission can infiltrate indoor space through windows, door, and ventilation system. Pollen. Outdoor pollen can enter building and contribute to indoor allergies, especially during certain seasons. Okay, and then HVAT system is uh, also source of the uh, indoor air pollution. Dirty dust and filter, uh, poorly maintained humidifier and air conditioner. Okay, random gas, uh, random uh, reacti reactive gas that occur naturally from the breakdown of uranium in soil, rock, and water. Okay, uh, random can seed into building to crack in floor and walls, uh, forcing a significant health risk including lung cancer. Occupant activities like uh, cooking, uh, hobbies like uh, painting, drawing, using soft burn for craft and help uh, for release VOC. Okay. And also uh, source come from moisture and dampness, uh, leaky roof or plumbing. Condensations, okay. Electro electronic equipment. This is also source of the uh, indoor air pollution. Printer and photocopies. Okay. These devices can emit ozone, POC, and particular matter, especially in the enclosed space or in adequate ventilation. New construction and renovations. Uh, Contractions, dust and debris, uh, renovations and construction activities can release dust, silica and other particles into air. Uh, gas, uh, off gassing from new material, new carpets, finitures and other material, material can release VOCs over time. Okay, the, this is some of the sources that will be involved in, that will uh, uh, contributes to uh, indoor air pollution, indoor air quality. Okay, the symptom of poor indoor air quality. Okay, and this is how it is fat. Consistency of the dry air. 
as a industrial course of practice icop uh, okay uh, are guidelines developed by uh, regulatory bodies industrial associations and government agency to help organ organizations maintain healthy and safe uh, indoor environments this code set out standard for air quality management pollutant control ventilations and monitoring to ensure the well-being of building occupants okay so uh, this is one of the uh, industry code practice this one so uh, there are many of the regulations standard okay uh, example uh, ashra standard a s h r a e standard american society of heating refrigerations and air conditioning engineers this is also uh, one of the guidelines uh, and ashra have uh, 62.1 62.2 uh and this is uh referred to the uh, indoor quality and also on the buildings okay uh also the guideline uh that have is a uh, epa guideline environmental protective agency uh osha occupational safety and health admin administrations guidelines World Health Organization WHO guideline for IAQ, uh, National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health NIOS NIOSH uh, IAP guideline. Uh, also, we also have a uh, lead. L E E D lead leadership in energy and environmental design standard. Uh, BREAM, B R E E A M building research establishment environmental assessment method. Uh, European European Union uh, standard E N standard. Uh, ISO standard international organizations for standardizations uh, American Industrial Hygiene Associated standard building code local and uh, region, uh, re, regional so uh, the key functions of this guideline actually practice from code is for proper is used for the proper ventilations uh pollutant uh, source control uh his vet system design and maintenance uh, monitoring uh, and testing uh, moisture uh, control okay this this is all uh, the standard uh, that can we follow the standard that can can we follow okay uh, okay this is all the responsibility duties This is a microbial uh, contaminant. Okay. Okay. Inspection and maintenance of MVET. Inspection and maintenance of MVET. MVET. What is an MVET? MVET actually stands for uh, mechanical uh, ventilation and air conditioning. Okay, uh, this is important because it refers to the system used in buildings and vehicles to regulate indoor air quality, uh, temperature, humidity, and air circulation. These uh, systems are critical for maintaining comfort and ensuring the health and safety of equipment by controlling the flow of fresh air, removing pollutants, and maintaining desired indoor climate conditions okay so
So um, the key component of MVAT actually mechanical ventilations. Uh, they have uh, exhaust ventilation. Uh, remove indoor air and create negative pressure, uh, supply ventilation, introduce fresh air from outside, balance ventilation, provide equal amount of fresh air, uh, EVR, energy recovery, ventilation and heat, and this is the adequate okay, air conditioning, uh, cool system, uh, the air conditioning system cool and dehumidity the air. Okay, this is all the picture of MVAT and VAC. So, uh, example of inspection and maintaining of MVAT at all time. You can clean a little bit filter, uh, uh, and at least for one every uh, one every month, clean. Um, make sure there is no contaminants build up or at least every six months but uh shall inspect and also clean the filter okay this is all the process or the uh, method load method how you can make the maintenance of uh, nvac control for prescribers activity okay when when you do the uh, activity uh the building owner or building management or employer shall ensure the equal work position and control are used during prescribed activity which may call not to me to okay you must use ppe seal in the area uh, and also displaying uh, signage uh safe work for the uh, studio Use proper as a system. This is all the process or method when you do the pre scribed activities. Uh, administration control measures are as carried out pre-session activities not during the working hours. Okay. Um, so where uh, where there is a renovation, the building owner of the building management shall not use material content or toxic substances okay use a uh, high recommend use low voc uh, emissions uh, materials okay one another thing is a uh, pest control this is also to uh, do the maintenance of the uh, indoor for air indoor quality okay uh, pest control Housekeeping and cleaning. Housekeeping and cleaning. Uh, tobacco smoking environment. You know, the guideline that can be used. Uh, and this is our example that I have uh, mentioned. Okay, components of local as of ventilation. Uh, this is some the uh, ventilations uh, that can, we can provide to have a good air quality, uh, good indoor air quality. Okay, uh, food like this. The purpose of food to collect the contaminant. Ducting system. Okay, the design of this ducting system. Of this system, air cleaner as in, uh, to clean exhaust air, air cleaner fan provide the energy to draw air or contaminant into the hood by detecting a negative pressure. Okay, this all all the inspection uh, that can be done. Okay, inspection of local exhaust ventilation system. Okay, this is about uh indoor air quality and uh, ventilation system continue with uh, chapter number three 3.3 3, uh, safe working in confined space okay we before i go further on this sub uh, chapter 
the uh, 3.3 and uh, you uh, have uh, about uh, 5 minutes okay to uh, see to watch this uh, uh, video link video on the, this YouTube uh, the interactions of the confined uh, space Okay, this one, this is uh, number one. Okay, this is number one. Uh, okay, uh, the video is based on the uh, animations. Uh, animations. Uh, animation uh, from. Um, uh group of uh of uh group that's called as uh e h s dot com animation okay this uh short video is about the confirm uh, confirm space safety as uh precautions Okay, animation. Okay, this is you can watch uh, this uh, short video. Number one and number two videos. Thanks. Uh, is uh, um, uh, process confirm a space entry. Okay. This is from Dragon Global. This uh, see yourself with this. This is the directions of the uh, confirm space. Okay. Yeah. So after you have uh, <laughs> see uh, watch the introductions of this uh, uh short video. Uh. Now we will learn or discuss about uh, the uh, definitions of confirm uh, confirm uh, space. Okay, what is a confined? Sorry, not confirm. Confined. Okay, confined space. Actually, the confined uh, space uh, is uh, a work environment. Okay, a work environment that has limited and uh, or restricted entry and exit point um, and is not designed for continuously occupancy. So such spaces can be hazardous due to the poor ventilation, uh, the presence of harmful uh, substances or the risk of the uh, entrapment. So example uh, of this uh, confined space include uh, tanks, uh, silos, uh, sewers, manholes. Remember the experience we had experience in Kuala Lumpur, the manhole. Okay, uh, last uh, two months. Uh, and then uh, the tunnels. And also the storage uh, bins. Okay, these are examples of the uh, confined space. Key characteristic uh, of a confined space. Okay, key characteristic of the confined space. Uh, there are three uh, categories. Can I uh, explain here? Number one is limited opening for entry and exit. Number two, the space is not intended for a prolonged uh, human occupancy. Uh, and number three, the potentials for hazardous conditions uh, such as lack of oxygen, uh, toxic gases and uh, flammable materials. 
So in this confined space, uh, it is a hazard uh, because of the uh, oxygen deficiency. Okay, oxygen deficiency, and then uh, the lack of the breathable oxygen uh, due to the poor ventilations or chemical reactions. Also, uh, it is also toxic environmental, okay, uh, toxic atmo atmospherals, uh, the presence of the harmful gases, uh, vapor and dust that can co uh, cause uh, illness or death, uh, engulfment, that means the risk of being trapped or uh, bored by liquid, Lost material or gases. Uh, also, physical hazards, uh, narrow spaces, machinery, and uh, or equipment that pose a risk of injury of entrapment. So, before uh, you have to make, uh, you have to uh, know, okay, before you want to enter this uh, uh, confined space proper uh, safety precautions uh, shall be followed uh, such as conducting a risk assessment monitoring air quality uh, using uh, personal protective equipment and have a risk rescue plan in place okay, that is a uh, uh, how uh, plan or the methods when you want to enter the confined space. In many countries, uh, confined space work in regulated by safety organizations to ensure uh, workers' protections. Okay. Uh, so this is what I have to tell. And okay, when you look these pictures, this is one of the confined space. Just see these pictures and find the answer. What is wrong? Okay. Also, the second picture. This is a manhole. The workers uh, go down to the manhole, and one of the workers goes straight to the small manhole. And what is wrong? What is wrong? Okay, equipment for the confined space. Okay, if you look here, a lot of equipment that can be used in the confined space. Uh, when you want to uh, work or when working in the confined space, uh, specialized equipment is essentially for ensuring uh, safety and minimizing hazards. Uh, these necessary equipment uh, typically include a tool for monitoring, uh, protections, communications and rescue. Here okay uh, here I list down uh, uh, the key equipment used in the confined space operations. Okay number one you can use a PPE that means personal protective equipment. Okay what is a, a PPE? Uh, is such as a respirator. When uh, use uh, respirator will use when air quality is compromised. Depending on the environment, this may include supply air respirator, uh, SAR or self-contained breathing, uh, breathing apparatus. Okay, uh, helmet. Uh, protect against heat injuries from uh, falling objects or cell um, or low overhead uh, space. Uh, glove, okay, don't forget glove. Uh, protect him from chemical, uh, sharp objects, and physical hazards. Protective uh, clothing, uh, clothing, uh, flame resistant or chemical resistant suit. A suit. Are often needed, and then uh, safety boots 
provide uh, protections from hazardous uh, surface of material. Uh, for for protections gear, uh, full body harnesses, lanyards, and lifelines for working in spaces with for risk. Okay, that is uh, number one uh, for equipment. Uh, number two, uh, we can use uh, the atmospheric monitoring equipment uh, such as a gas detector used to test uh, for dangerous uh, gases. Um, and these monitors are crucial to ensure the atmosphere uh, is safe before and during entry. Uh, oxygen monitors ensure the confined space has sufficient oxygen level. Uh, number three uh, is a ventilation equipment uh, such as a blower and fans. Uh, these uh, equipments used to validate uh, the space by supplying fresh air or extracting uh, hazardous gases. Uh, ducting. Okay, flexible ducts are used to direct air into or out of the space. Okay, number four, uh, you can use also a lighting, explosive uh, proof lighting, uh, specially designed to present a spark in uh, environments where fl uh, flammable gases and dust are present. Uh, pro uh, portable, waterproof, and durable light ensure good uh, visibility in low light condition. Number five uh, also can use communications devices. Okay, communication devices, uh, to, uh, such as a uh, two-way radios, uh, hand-free communication system. Uh, when you use two-way radios, all uh, allows communication between workers inside and the, in the confined space and the safety team outside. Uh, when hand-free communication system, uh, that this is uh, allowed all workers to communicate uh, while using both hands for work. Number six, uh, entry and uh, retrieval equipment, uh, tripods and debits. Uh, used for rising the lowering workers into vert vertical space. Okay, vertical space like tents and manholes. Uh, winches uh, provide mechanical assistance for retrieving uh, personnel in the event of uh, an emergency. Um, number seven, rescue and equipment. Uh, emergency equipment. Uh, this as as a first aid kits, uh, rescue scratches, uh, and rescue report system. Number eight, uh, lock out, take out, uh, lotto equipment, uh, lock out devices, and that ensure the machine or uh, energy sources are properly isolated and cannot be uh, accidentally activated while working are inside the space. Okay, and number nine, escape uh, breathing uh, apparatus EBA, uh, escape set, use a small portable air pack that allow workers to exit the uh, uh, confined space quickly. In case of emergency, especially in the toxic uh, atmosphere, and number ten, uh, work platform uh, platforms and ladders. Okay, provide uh, ladders is uh, provide safe access uh, to and from vertical confined spaces. Uh, platform uh, help with uh, stability and movement in the confined spaces where the floor may be uh, hazardous or uneven. Okay, these all proper training in the use of this equipment along the consistent monitoring is essential to prevent accidents during the uh, confined uh, space operations. Uh, every confined space entry should have a detailed emergency uh, response 
plan that includes uh, the availability of rescue equipment and personnel. Okay, so uh, that's uh, some of the equipments uh, that needed in uh, confined space. So let's look on this picture. Okay, don't give the answer, just look and then think about the answer. What is wrong of this uh, uh, confined space? Okay, number two picture. This is also the confined space. Okay, what's wrong with this picture? What's wrong with these uh, workers? Okay, so next we go for the confined space uh, fatal accident. Okay, actually, uh, this confined space uh, fatal accidents are tragically common due to the unique and uh, several hazards associated with the such environment. Uh, this accident often okay, uh, result from a, a lack of awareness, improper safety protocol, or insufficient equipment. So, uh, some of the common causes and examples of fatal accidents in confirmed Space, uh, I can list it as uh, number one, uh, oxygen deficiency. Okay, oxygen deficiency cause a uh, confined space uh, can have reducted oxygen level due to the displacement by other gases, chemical reactions, and also biological processes. Uh, example, uh, when we talk about oxygen. Workers entering a sewer or sto storage tank uh, may encounter dangerously low oxygen levels uh, without uh, proper testing. A common scenario uh, is that the first worker collapses and secondly rescues who enter the space without protection also collapse after that. Okay, that is an example. Number two is toxic gas as floor. Uh, uh, toxic gas explosion uh, cause the harmful gases such as hydrogen sulfurate, uh, uh, carbon monoxide, methane, or nitrogen can accumulate in confined, uh, confined spaces. Uh, so here in example, okay, example uh, 2017, uh, two workers were killed. Okay, after entering a sewer a system in Florida. Okay, this is an example in the America, United States of America. Uh, they were overcome by hydrogen sulfate and methane, uh, which has accumulated in the manhole where we're working in. Okay, several other who attempt rescue were also hospitalized. Okay, uh, but, so, yang batang membantu pun kecedera juga okay, disebabkan letupan tersebut ok, number 3 uh, is uh, engulfment ok, engulfment cause uh, workers uh, can be engulfed by material like grains, sands or liquid store in silo or tank ok, so which can lead to uh, self suffocations uh, uh, example like uh, uh, grain uh, silo accidents are particularly common in the agricultural industry. Uh, workers um, become trapped in shifting grains, which can be behave like a uh, quicksand. So in, in 2019, okay, a workers in Loa was uh, engulfed in a corn inside a grand bin okay, leading to suffocations okay that is a very dangerous uh, and it will become death okay number four is uh, explosions or fire okay this will cause uh, flammable gases uh, vapor or dust can ignite in confined spaces especially in the space is not it quickly ventilated 
or explosion proof equipment is not used okay uh, number five uh, droning or submission okay causes workers can become trapped in space that unexpectedly filled with liquid such as water chemical and sludge okay so uh, example in 2014 two workers die in washington after they were attracted in a confined undergoes fall that began to fill with water from the nearby storm drain the rising water made uh, escape impossible number six uh, lack of proper rescue okay uh, this will cause a uh, fatalist uh, occur when untreated workers or colleagues attempt to rescue without proper equipment resulting in a uh, multiply casual lies okay so like example in 2019 uh, accident in uh, virginia uh, the worker fell unconscious due to the oxygen deficiency in the confined, uh, confined space and five other workers die when they attempt to rescue him without uh, protective uh, gear right? protective gear and number seven is electrocutations or mechanical hazards uh, will cause electrical system or mechanical equipments in confined space can pose a significant risk if they are not properly locked out or isolated uh, number eight inadequate inadequate uh, ventilations uh, will cause a poor ventilations in confined phase can also be built up of toxic and uh, flammable gases or simply lead to oxygen depletion okay uh, so uh, eight uh, fatal accident can be happen so uh, if you look in this slide 70% caused by supervisor or higher. 64% uh, did not need to enter. Okay. 66% uh, water was worse sewer constructions. And what happened? 78% oxygen de def uh, deficiency or IDL toxic. What mean IDL toxic? Immediately dangerous to life or health that means uh, 78 percent 95 percent no confined space training enter 95 percent cases 100 percent cases no power your ventilation and another 100 percent that will uh, always happen is no in 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 statement in statement at site okay to mention as it does atmosphere okay So from here, the it will be major point. Okay, major point. Why I told all about this? This major point is we have to preventing uh, confined space uh, fatalities. Fatalities. Okay. So uh, how to how we want to prevent this? Uh, one um, use uh, air monitoring. Okay, always test the atmosphere before entering the confined space. <coughs> Good ventilation, ensure proper ventilation. Uh, PPE, uh, don't forget to use PPE. Permit system, uh, implement a confined space entry, uh, entry permit system to ensure all hazards are identified and addressed. Uh, Five training, ensure all workers are trained in confined space hazards procedures and uh, use of equipments number six emergency uh, emergency response okay emergency response have a risk rescue plan and equipment ready and uh, ensure rescue team are trained and prepared uh, prepared okay prepared uh, and then uh, more space Fatalities in confined space can be prevented by the right precautions 
equipment and training, ensuring uh, complying with safety regulations that is important and standard, uh, such as OSHA uh, in Malaysia or uh, in uh, United States of America. Okay, is the key to preventing this tragic uh, accident. Okay, definition by ANSI. What is ANSI? Actually, ANSI is the uh, American National Standard Institute. Uh, ANSI, that means define a confined space through a standard of ANSI or, or some uh, guideline procedure. Okay, uh, safety requirements for entering confined space. Okay, according to this conf uh, standard, a confined space is characterized by the following uh, term. Number one, limited mean, limited means of entry and exit. The space has restricted openings for entry or exit, making it difficult for workers to easily enter, uh, exit or evacuate in the event of an emergency. Number two, no designed for continuous occupancy. Uh, the space is not intended for routine or prolonged uh, human occupancy. It may be suitable for short term access for maintaining and inspection, but not as a workspace when someone uh, would stay continuously. Okay. And number three, uh, potential for hazardous uh, condition. Uh, this uh, the space may contain or have the potentials to prover for to develop uh, dangerous uh, atmosphere and physical hazard uh, such as harmful gases, uh, low uh, oxygen levels, or uh, the uh, risk of uh, entrapment. So uh, the N uh, A N S I uh, definitions align with the general safety standard, emphasizing that confined space required careful evaluations and control of hazard before entry, and often necessitated a permit process, proper ventilation, atmospheric monitoring, and the use of protective equipment. Uh, this uh, standard actually uh, provide uh, detailed requirement and uh, best practice for safety working in the confine and management the risk assessing with uh, them. Okay. So, uh, so this is a, a confined space. Uh, oxygen. Carbon monoxide and this in term what happened you can you can read afterward okay this one uh, this is equipment requirement for entering the confined space okay <coughs> and then let's look on the uh, confined space entry okay confined space entry uh, what mean by confined uh, space entry? Okay, this is referred to the process of entering, working in, and exiting the confined space. Okay, due uh, to the hazard um, confined space present, uh, strict safety produce, uh, procedure must be followed to protect workers. Mm. Have an overview of the key steps. And consider involved in the confined space entry. So, uh, first, uh, you have to confine space identification. Okay, determine if the space is confined. Before enter entry, assess the work environment to see if the qualified as a confined space. This is the this is defined by limited entry exit being not designed to confine continuous occupancy and potential hazard and uh, permit required confined space this is the space contain or has the potential of hazardous conditions and other toxic uh, atmosphere engulfment risk or oxygen deficiency 
it is classified as a permit required confined space. Number two, you have to have a permit system. The permit, uh, for permit system confined space, the formal enter permit must be issued before work, uh, begins. This permit outline identify hazard and precautions to be taken, name of authorized entrance, attendance and supervisors, date and duration of the entry, and also emergency producer and risk Risk, uh, rescue plans. Number three is the hazard assessment. Uh, so air monitoring uh, before entering. Uh, the atmosphere must be tested uh, for at oxygen level. Uh, present of toxic gases, flammable gases or vapor. Uh, this all the air monitoring, and then physical hazards also assess risk of entrapment, engulfment, uh, temperature extremes, uh, electrical hazards, and mechanical hazards. Okay, number four, you also have to know the ventilations, provide adequate uh, ventilation, confined fire uh, space, often required mechanical ventilation, fans and blower, remember, fan uh, or blower, to maintain a uh, safety uh, atmosphere. Continue ventilation may be uh, necessary to vent the build up hazardous gases or ensure oxygen level maintain safe. Okay. Okay, and this is all the some of the pictures of reading. Number five, don't forget uh, personal protective uh, equipment. Uh, depending on the hazard assessment, workers may need uh respirators or self contained with mean uh, breathing uh, apparatus uh, protective clothing hard hat uh, glove safety boots for protected equipment number 6 don't forget enter entry team rules okay entry team rules uh, authorized entrance Workers who enter the confined space must be, must, uh, they must be trained and aware of the hazard. Attendance <coughs> possible outside the space to monitor the entrance and the situation. Entry supervi supervisor, the person in charge of overseeing the entry process, ensure that all procedures are followed and safety is maintained. Okay. That is the entry team result. Number seven is communications. So communications, mm, continuous communication between the entrance and the attendance is essential. This can be done via radios, intercoms, hand signals to ensure the safety of workers inside. Number eight, rescue emergency procedures. Number eight, Okay, plan, uh, rescue plan. The detailed plan must be in the place before entering. That means you have to know the rescue plan. Uh, outline how the rescue workers if the emergency arise. Rescue equipment. This may include report, witches and uh, retreat lines. Non-entry rescue. When possible, plans for rescuing workers without sending others into the consigned phase using retrieve system uh, like lifeline number nine is entry entry procedure okay entry procedures um entry procedures uh follow this step during the confined space entry okay uh, procedure so complete and review the permit number one and uh, number nine uh such as complete and review the permit test and monitoring air uh, quality this all the procedure set up and ensure proper ventilation uh, equip retrain with necessary PPE confine communication system are working ensure the attendant and super supervisor are real ready and uh, informed and uh, process with entry and continuously monitors for any uh, guess, uh, changes in hazards number 10 continuous monitoring uh, atmospheric testing 
watch for physical hazard at during the uh, continuous monitoring. Number seven, exit procedures. Exit, uh, safe exit workers must safely exit the confined phase at the end of the task when continuous become unsafe or if the air monitoring indicated dangerous level or gas, gases or, or oxygen. Review after work is complete, the entry supervisor should review the operation to ensure that all the protocol were followed and answer all the issues for uh, further uh, inter entry. Okay, post uh, entry review. Post entry review. Uh, okay, post entry review. Once the work is complete, uh, conduct the post entry review. That means to confirm that all workers has exit safe. Uh, deactive or lock out any equipment used in the confined space, evaluate the process and improve safety measurement or future uh, entries. Okay, so um, uh, confined space entry actually uh, requires through the planning, uh, hazard uh, assessment, uh, proper uh, use of PPE and well-defined communications and rescue plan. Uh, so following established procedures is crucial to presenting accidents, injuries and fatally least during work inside confined spaces. Uh, comply with safety regulations such as those from OSHA, operation, uh, Operational Safety and Health Administration or ANSI, American National Standard Institute is key. Okay to maintaining the safety working environment. Okay, this is some of examples uh, of the regulation or of the guidelines uh, when we deal with the confined space. Okay, one of the example in the tunnel construction. Okay, so uh, so after we have finished uh, these uh, discussions about the confined space. Uh, so this is uh, for uh, discussions. Uh, I will. Uh, this is for discussion of three sub uh, topic. Okay. So we will continue in next lecture. Okay. Uh, that's all for this time. Uh, see you in next time. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi. Well, we're